Another simmering summer day in the Southern California desert. The skies are clear, the air is dry, and the winds are calm. It's a perfect day to fly America's next generation jet fighter, the F-22. The US Air Force calls it the Raptor, and they're hoping it'll replace the aging F-15 in a few years' time. At more than $100 million each, the Air Force also hopes this high-tech wonder will be America's top fighter. This is no ordinary Air Force base, this is Edwards, where America's jets and their pilots come to test the absolute limits of flight. This summer marks 50 years for Edwards as the official U.S. Air Force Flight Test Center. They call it pushing the envelope, exploring the limits of every plane's ability. The pilots are an elite group chosen from thousands for their skills. The next generation of test pilots with those skills are already training here. Major Mike Jansen is one of them. Edwards has passed into legend as the keeper of these right skills. They're known as the right stuff, the stuff that great pilots are made of. Jansen is not your ordinary jet fighter jock. He's among the best and the brightest in the US Air Force, already a veteran F-16 pilot with combat experience. Major Jansen is typical of the seasoned pilots who come here. Many of them have already been flying for a decade with at least 1,000 hours of flight time in jets like the F-16. And they're not just pilots, they're also engineers with advanced degrees at the top of their class. Like the real test pilots at Edwards, students are required to do some testing of their own. The ability to fly with precision following an exact course across this desert land is all part of the rigorous regime student pilots must undergo. For Major Jansen, becoming a test pilot was a natural next step for someone who spent a career flying fighter jets. How am I going to make a difference? You know, what can I do to pass on the knowledge that I've gained uh, by flying operationally in Iraq and in Bosnia and, and over in uh, Kosovo. How can I take that and pass it on to the guys who are going to be here 10, 20, 30 years after me and make it so that I, they can do their job better than I could do my job when I did it? And, and for me, the answer was come here to test pilot school. Major Jansen is part of the 50th class to graduate from Edwards. He's following a long list of pioneers, some of them now legends. I think there's a common thread that ties us all together. I don't care if you're born 50 years ago or if you're born tomorrow. Uh, there's that one gene that we all possess that drives us to this point because it, it takes a lot of work to get to, to where every one of us has gotten. And uh, if you meet one of those guys and you have a conversation with them, you kind of chuckle because it's almost like you're having a conversation with yourself to a certain degree. The official Edwards film history tries to capture the essence of the right stuff. There was no dearth of qualified applicants because by the early 50s, a whole mystique had grown up about Edwards. It had become a mecca for the very best. Men like Jaeger. In an age fascinated by higher, faster, farther, these men won worldwide acclaim. A great many others who also, day after day, rode on the cutting edge of calamity. Half a century later, the Edwards faithful gather to honor that history. The base was being named an historic aerospace site. One of those at the modest ceremony is a man who rode that cutting edge of calamity nearly every day, Chuck Yeager. He's the man whose exploits are synonymous with the milestones of flight here at Edwards, the man whose name is synonymous with the right stuff. The base museum celebrates the aircraft that made Edwards and its pilots famous. Some, piloted by Jaeger, flew faster than the speed of sound. Others flew through the atmosphere to the edge of space. You know, it makes you, makes you think back and all the days and years that were spent here in flight test and all the friends, you know, that they named strip, streets after that gave their all, and there's a lot of them. And that includes Captain Glenn Edwards. A display tells how he died in a test flight in 1948. A year later, the base was renamed in his honor. Things have come a long way since those early days. The technology has moved on, but pilots are still needed to pioneer. They got, uh, the airplanes are a lot easier to fly, and there's 
very few milestones like we had in the old days. Uh, but uh, the job is just as important, and they're very, very well-trained and very skilled guys. So. They were testing an ungainly looking machine. Test pilots have flown more than 500 types of aircraft at Edwards, almost always pushing the science of flight to the limit. And sometimes, especially in the early days of jet aviation, pilots push their planes beyond those limits. That legacy of extreme flight is part of the curriculum here at the test pilot school. It conducts two classes a year for a total of 40 to 50 students. Along with about 140 hours of flying time, students face an equally rigorous schedule of classroom instruction. And it's no longer a school just for US pilots. America's allies around the world also send their best and brightest here to find the right stuff. Major Philip Cheong flies F-16s for the Singapore Air Force. He'll return home to test the planes his nation buys from the U.S. and elsewhere. The experience has been great. Uh, the flying has been great because I get to fly. I got to fly basically like close to 30 different kinds of aircraft. And that's the best part of it, I think. Yeah. Some graduates of the test pilot school come back for more flying here at Edwards. They include squadron leader Justin Paynes. He's a Harrier jump jet pilot in Britain's Royal Air Force. A 1995 graduate, Payne says it prepares you for a different kind of flying. Uh, you learn as an operational pilot to get the best out of your airplane and to feel the weapon system as best you can. You learn as a test pilot to turn that around, to try and work out what's wrong with the weapon system and what can be improved. And it's a whole different way of thinking about uh, what you're doing in the air. The school's commander says past and present students share common traits. I think the, the, the caliber of the students that we have are, are not unlike the students that were here 50 years ago. Uh, they all come to us with the superb flying records and uh, they, all, they all leave, uh, they go off and do great things like our predecessors have done. Some of the newest graduates will go straight into the latest test programs, like the one for the F-22. Their mission, to make sure the planes are ready for combat. Pilots and engineers also fly another kind of mission here at Edwards, thanks to computer technology. Flight simulators allow them to test the latest aircraft in the relative safety of an air-conditioned building. It's a far cry from the days of Jaeger 50 years ago. In the early decades at Edwards, the newest ideas could only be put to test for real. The results were sometimes unexpected, but test pilots would say that's the whole point of testing. Much was learned, they say, from exploring the unknown. Without landing flaps. At touchdown, the left gear failed. And on at least one occasion in 1984, engineers at Edwards deliberately crashed a plane to test the effects of a new fuel additive intended to limit fires to with dramatic results. It promised to prevent the ignition of massive fireballs. Edwards bred men like Scott Crossfield, the first man to fly twice the speed of sound. You gotta have that latitude to be your own decision maker. It works against you though because nobody ever asked me to be an astronaut because I had a bad habit of turning off the radio when I didn't like what I was hearing from the ground. <laughs> Given all the high-tech advances at Edwards, is there still a need for the right stuff? They still need to be great pilots, yes. That'll never go away. 